Okay, okay. What am I gonna talk about today? Okay, today is a uh, call. Uh, today is a. Uh, uh, <clears throat> today is a. Uh, <clears throat> Today's date is 19th of July 2017. It's a Wednesday. It's 12:41 p.m. Oh, never mind. Uh, <coughs> Today I'm going to talk about aliens versus predator. This is one. Not this one. Uh, this is one of the first comics that I ever bought. In Ipo, of course, I think I bought my comics from two sources, which is uh, Novel Hut, Novel Hut, and Novel Hut used to be, I'm not sure where they are now actually, I think they are, Novel Hut, there is only one branch uh, left, so I, let me tell you the history of the Noah Hut before I go delve into the Aliens vs Predator books here. Wow, oh, got a lot of shine. Uh, can I re re rectify it? No, cannot. A lot of light. Okay, back in the 1990s, I think uh, there was a place called Noah Hut. It's uh, owned by uh, I forgot what's his name already. Shit, it's by an Indian family. Uh, there was an old uh, lady or woman, she's a big sized and she's always there. Noah Hut was in Yikfung, complex Yikfung, which is in the new town or old town in Po. Yikfung, I'm not sure where it lies in the boundary or the segregation between or the difference, difference, uh, difference between Ipo Old Town and New Ipo Town. So Noah Hut in Yipfo. I I remember. I'm not sure whether I was in Form Three, Form Four, Form Five, uh, or Form Two, Form One. I'm not sure. Uh, take a bus to to Ipo City Center and go and buy some comics. Back then. In the 1990s, we thought, or I thought, that comics uh, is a valuable thing. You, I mean, it's like going to appreciate in value uh, because it's like an investment. But then again, like all things that you hope for, it's going to crumble into ashes. So the value of these things here, I think, would be almost similar to toilet paper because there are too many of these things out there. For it to be valuable, a comic will only be valuable if it is very scarce, as in not many printed versions out there, so the price will skyrocket. Skyrocket. In the news, sometimes you would see all these like uh, action comics number one or whatever that goes for ten thousand US dollars and whatnot. Uh, those are rare. And that makes us think, oh my god, it's such a, I mean comics is so expensive and it might be a good investment, but it is only a good investment if there are not many people having the same goddamn copy as you have. So it is only going to appreciate in value if, I'm showing my nipples now, uh, if there's like more demand than supply so it's like a demand versus supply thing if there are too many people who bought this this issue number one aliens versus predator or too many out there this copy that means the value won't appreciate it won't go up because it's not uh, scarce the, the, yeah it's not scarce if it's easy to get that means the value will just Hover around the same old thing, which is this price here. This is a direct uh, edition. Direct edition means that this came straight from America. Direct editions are more expensive than the non-direct 
editions which is printed in Malaysia or somewhere else or been uh, the language has been changed into or the language has been localized that means they translated into Bahasa Melayu or Malay language the value won't be that high unless that local language copy of this which I don't think there is a local uh, copy of this in Malay language if that copy is scarce uh, and not readily available there are not many copies out there that means that edition that local edition would be uh, more sought after and more valuable and the monetary value would appreciate would go up in price so it's a scarcity versus supply versus demand type of uh, thing if you want to like invest in something if it's really sought after there are not many of it around then means the value will definitely go up so Noah Hutt, Noah Hutt uh, is run by an Indian family and uh, they specialize in selling all these comics and of course in buying old novels and selling it back to the community so you can get your old copies or your new copies of novels but nowadays I'm not sure whether novels are popular or not I mean it's nice to actually hold a big novel which uh, you can bring into the toilet and read if you are into that thing because it's always a different uh, different feeling when you're reading uh, something that you can hold on to versus something on an iPad or on a laptop which you can scroll through it's a different feeling of course you can like scrutinize it nicely you know like, whereas in the iPad of course you can like blow it up but it is a different feeling having the copy here in your hands is gives it a more intrinsic value that that tells you oh I have this copy oh my god it feels good I can see that the toilet paper is becoming yellow there's some fungus and stuff like that there's a different feeling you are it's tangible you can can hold on to it versus something that's electronic which you can't like feel the texture of the the paper it's a different feeling that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say so no hut was in Yip Fung, then the business was good then they opened up another branch in Baksan Grand aka Ipo Parade aka the new name now that that building I'm talking about is just next to main convent the girls school so the one in the main con uh, <coughs> the one in Ipo Parade which is a mall next to main convent the school the girls school uh, that that branch is no longer there I think now Dick Fung does not have the original Noah Hut anymore because the phone has gone to shit. It's like fourth level I'm talking about. Fourth level was where Noah Hut began. Fourth level is like nothing there. It's like broken glass. The it's like broken glass. Normally Noah Hut in Yik Fung is like a lot of glass, see-through glass that surrounds it that borders the lot, the corner lot. Now it, I think it's broken already. I think I visited Yik Fung about a uh, a year ago I went up to the fourth floor and take a look around and film the place and it's now a mess but in Yikfung there's still some uh, shops that uh, that sell like anime Gundams action figures and whatnot hobby stuff because the rent is cheaper in Yikfung because it's like such a old building and it's like gone to shit it's almost abandoned but not quite so the rent is cheaper there so the, these hobby hobby shops will take advantage of such a thing because hobby shops are more like a niche type of uh, business because not many people would, would uh, know about it so and uh, all these hobby shops uh, rely on repeat business means their customer base is like they know where they are uh, if they want something they will find it their customers are what I'm trying to say is uh, they will they won't get new customers it's always they are always all these hobby shops are always uh, servicing the existing existing customer base so back to no hut no hut is 
now I'm not sure where they are. I think they are. I think they have a shop on the same road as Ipoh Parade. They are in a corner lot of a of a building that is very dark grey outside. The facade is dark grey, and that that lot used to be that that shop lot used to be occupied by some kind of like lawyer uh, firm. So I think they are there. I'm not sure. They are near the dim sum area of Ipoh. That's what I'm trying to say. It's near the dim sum area. Dim sum area is here. Then Ipoh Parade is here. Then uh, Noah Hut might be here. I'm not sure. I have to go there and confirm one day. <clears throat> so that's the history of Noah Hut. So back when I was young, I went to Yik Fung, the Noah Hut fourth floor, and I I looked at this. Oh my God! Aliens versus Predator. What's this? I talked to the old guy and he says the guy, the Indian guy with the moustache uh, and hair, go, uh, hair or what, one white hair strand coming off, the, off his uh, ear or something like that. It's a nice chap. <coughs> so, and I asked him, oh, how, how is this? He said, oh no, I'm going collect it. It's a collector's item. Yeah, it's not a collector's item. It's dog shit or tissue paper or toilet paper to to wipe your ass with but now my this is the first issue of aliens versus predator there are two artists uh, okay this is a 12 issue series so I don't remember how long it took the duration between one issue and the other but I think it's bi-monthly it's not monthly I think it's bi-monthly bi as in bi or Bisexual means what? Can, you can fuck both genders, is it? That's how bisexual is, I think. Yeah, I think bisexual is like, you can fuck a guy or you can fuck a girl. So this is bi-monthly. So it comes out once every two months. So there are two artists. One, okay, art is pretty good, okay. How much is, how much I bought it for, I'm not sure. I did not write it down anywhere. Thank God this is a collector's item in my heart it's a collector's item so uh, the most stupid thing I can do is actually write down the price in ringgit or and when I bought it so I did not do that this is a collector's item back then when I was young I also was like smart enough to to realize that if you write anything on this uh, this collector's edition or direct edition comic the value would go down so look at the cover. The covers that I'm going to show you, the 12 covers that I'm going to show you of this title, Aliens vs. Predator, the date years of the species, is done by uh, an artist by the name of Bolton. John Bolton. It's very nice actually. It really captures the feel. It's confusing. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. <clears throat> so the art is pretty good and the paper quality is, is it's actually nice actually it's not glossy paper but it's good paper as time goes by by the end of uh, by the end of the run by the end of uh, issue 12 so from 10 11 12 if I'm not mistaken the paper quality is not as good as this one here so gradually as time goes by the paper quality that they printed this this story on became more like recycled paper or toilet paper like so the art is pretty nice. I like the art. The art is like lots of lines. Very the the paneling is nice. It's it's kind of like confusing, but it is quite artistic. Okay, it's very nice. And as time goes by, the the artist what's the artist name? The penciler by the name of Jackson Guis. Jackson Guis here is the penciler and. John B. T. is the inker. Very nice lines. I, I love the inking and the layout. The art is very nice. The girls are cute and pretty. It's just pretty damn good. So if you can, I mean, you, you can buy this book just to admire the art. You know, you can get the trade paperbacks. You will, you will like appreciate the art. But of course, the story is kind of like confusing as shit. What I read the the last issue, the twelfth issue this morning in the toilet, and 
wow, I had to wrap my head around everything. It's confusing because it's like a more like a flashback type of thing, and all the all the questions will be answered at the end of of the of issue twelve. And even though it's kind of answered things, but you have to really think back and connect the dots. This is a this is a story that you have to read a couple of times to actually get the whole story because it's confusing. Unfortunately, it's confusing. So there are two artists for this thing here, Jackson Grease and later on, I think Jackson Grease only did about 3-4 issues. Yeah, 3-4 issues. This. Oh shit, I gotta like rearrange this goddamn thing. So I better put this nice little copy back. Did you, did you like the the, art, the artistry and the paneling of this book? It's very nice. So let's put this back here. Aliens vs Predator. This is the first issue. So I'm gonna show you the second issue. This is the second issue. Artist is still Greece, Jackson Greece, and of course the artwork, the we call the cover is by John Bolton. Very nice, right? Very nice, all red, and and the main characters are in front. Third issue is here, also Greece. But the inker is Barreto, it's not, it's not BT. BT, the inker was in the first issue, BT here. First issue was BT and uh, second issue, the inker is Barreto. And BT did not come back, you know, BT did not come back, Barreto was the inker already, but Guis is is still the main pencil. Let's go into issue three. So issue three here, we can see the main character holding the the head of the predator. It's still very pretty, but when you change inkers, you, you kind of like change the subtle style of it. So the Eduardo Barreto is the inker. Eduardo Barreto. Eduardo Barreto still has to ink the pencils, but and I'm amazed that his style is almost similar to the first inker BT. So he diligently uh, copied the or put ink into the pencils quite quite uh, faithfully. It's still very nice. The paneling, everything is, by, of course, by the penciler. It's done well. But there is always some subtle changes when you compare one anchor to the other. And, uh, yeah. What I'm trying to say is, if you have one penciler, right? Let's say one page. One page of artwork that's all pencil. Okay? And you copy it. You got two pieces of the same pencil. You give it to two different inkers, and when you bring it back, when once they have inked it, it's a bit different. You can tell because inking is of course also an artwork. When you trace, one person does not trace the same way as another person. It's not like a computer which which everything is the same. And uh, if you have two inkers, you have two different results or two subtle subtly. There's some changes between the inkers, okay? They change. But I'm I'm surprised that Eduardo Barreto was able to capture the style and feel of the first inker, which is uh, BT. This is the fourth issue. 
it's all yellow. The girl here with the pulse, uh, is it called pulse rifle? And the predator here, Claremont and Barreto. Barreto now, just now, the two issues, second and third issues, he was the inker. And suddenly now Barreto is his own man. He's penciling it himself and inking it himself. And I must say, the artwork, of course, I prefer Jackson Guise's, uh, Guise's type of uh, inking. Oh, sorry. Jackson Guise's penciling. I prefer that. But, but I'm, I mean, Eduardo Barreto is also quite a good uh Penciler, I mean a good artist. So he is like doing his own penciling and inking, but the intricacies of the paneling, uh, the design is different from the original uh, penciler of the three issues, three first is issues. This is the fourth issue. Barreto Eduardo Barreto has taken over the art duties from issue 4 to issue 12 so he's the main artist already they changed artists and of course uh, his one is quite sexy he loves to depict all these like sexy girls in all these uh, all these situations and all this uh, all this attire all this sexy gown not gown sexy lingerie but then again I do prefer Jackson Gris to Eduardo Barreto as an as a main artist, but Barreto is still good. Okay, still good. The pictures are nice and stuff. It's all good. Oh, my parents are back. This is uh, issue 5. Better go and help out and get the stuff, food and stuff. So let's continue on the aliens versus predator, the aliens of the species. This is issue number 5. Issue number 6. Cover. Issue number seven. Unfortunately, it has this thing here that says uh, "cover gallery" inside, and it's blocking the the cover itself. So, unfortunately, having this stupid shit thing telling me something while blocking the cover that looks amazing. Issue number eight. Issue number nine. Issue ten. Issue eleven. Although they have been said the <coughs> don't like the face of this <coughs> fella here. Eyeballs is a bit too arched. And finally, issue 12 the bursting of the alien from the main character. In this issue, this issue, issue 12, there's my details inside. So I sent a letter there and it was, it was printed. So, those are the uh, nice looking, uh, nice looking covers from this Aliens vs Predator. So, all of these issues here, they have only one writer by the name of Christopher Claremont. Christopher Claremont is famous for revitalizing the X-Men franchise uh, with Jim Lee, Chris Claremont. He produced 
quite a number of uh, strong female protagonists and there were like three four females inside here and they were tough as nails very very strong as strong as the men so <coughs> the story <coughs> let's go into the story the story is like kind of like very intriguing it builds up into a crescendo and it's exciting but then again it's bad shit crazy sometimes because it puts you in the middle of the story and at the second half of the the arc the story arc it relies heavily on the backstory the stories from the past to conclude the story it can be quite quite confusing and it took me about uh, two weeks to finish these 12 issues yeah two weeks to finish 12 issues I only like read the books when I'm in the shitter in the can taking a dump and reading these things it's nicer to read this than to uh, bring my laptop in to the I mean I can bring the laptop inside the toilet but I made my shitting time or while away my shitting time by reading these comics <coughs> Not sure the price of per issue. I don't remember. I think I kept a log actually how much I I paid for it. <coughs> Maybe it's somewhere here. I think I have uh, yeah, I should have a log. When I was like young, I was very meticulous in keeping track of where my money goes to or where my allowance goes to. It's not in this book. Maybe it's inside my box that has all the comics. Then there will be the prices. <coughs> Sometimes I do artwork. Poetry too. Try to write some songs. Like one of them here. I don't know whether I can still sing it or not. Why are the stars burning tonight? Don't they know my heart still hurts? You're gone, you're so far away. Why are the stars twinkling tonight? Can they feel my sorrow now? I'm so lonely and so blue. Uh, I forgot really how to sing all these songs. Sometimes I do create some of my own songs because back then. To be a singer is like a, to be famous and a singer is, I mean I don't have the voice for to be a singer but dreams were made of <coughs> ashes. Of course I wanted to be a gigolo too. So Chris Claremont, he made a very intriguing story but a confusing one. And uh, if you have a chance, you know, you can go and buy the trade paperbacks. Maybe they have it in Kinokuniya. What, uh, Kinokuniya of KLCC of course that's a bit expensive you know but the uh, chances of getting all these issues complete is kind of like slim maybe or um, sometimes they have all those like cheap sales in uh, Wang Plaza maybe you can get some of these <coughs> this is like dog shit now but back then it was valuable <coughs> that's about it there's nothing else to talk about the I'm not going to delve into the story because the story is something that you have to experience it yourself you got the humans you got the predators you got the aliens and all of them are not your not your throwaway characters they are like part of the story unfortunately when it when the story ended it stopped it ended quite abruptly and it would be nice to actually have a a further conclusion as in having a second series what happened to Karin Delacroix uh, what was or what is uh, further adventures after this story arc concluded and uh, yeah the, the aliens and predator universe is very interesting in light of uh, the current time which is the interest towards aliens is revitalized because of uh, 
because his face really squat. Uh, his alien covenant. Uh, <coughs> and of course, there will be a new Predators movie coming out soon. That will be exciting. And uh, because of many uh, YouTube channels that is dedicated towards Predators, monsters, aliens that are just cropping up, like Acid Glow, Mr. H Reviews, and somebody else which I've forgotten. They are like flourishing because there's an interest towards all these properties. Maybe one year ago there wasn't much at all and suddenly there were a lot of like YouTube uh, channels. What's good about YouTube is they compile information and make a more uh, easier to consume videos about subjects that you like, like the aliens and what type of aliens they are, the predators, why are they call what Yao Chas and stuff like that. So now is the time to be alive and a good time to actually learn about all these characters that we love and fear. <coughs> yep, we fear all these things. It's a good time. The okay, YouTube is like it's a nice place for the source. It's a nice source of information for all these properties. So go and read Aliens vs Predator, Dailies of the Species and uh, Yes. Uh, I don't have time. Uh. Uh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go out and eat because uh, I've been going out quite often and I don't have time to do that because tomorrow I'm going to KL. Not sure whether to bring the laptop or not. That's how it takes, uh, it's com cumbersome. I have to buy a desktop too, I have to like take the jump and spend 6,000 ringgit. Oh, that's a lot of money. And a desktop. <coughs> that's about it, that they list of the species. <coughs> Go read it, man. It's quite nice. And if you don't understand the story, don't blame me, okay? It's confusing as fuck. But if you take the time to read two, three times and also at the same time uh, admire the artwork then maybe you have a rip roaring time sneak imaginary blades from my wrist predator style it's good stuff go read it first there, there are other i mean the alien universe which uh, really squat has uh, killed off the extended universe of the alien is is wasp in the comics. Uh, universe is wasp is uh, this is published by Dark Horse. So, in one single, in one stroke, really Squat was able to destroy all the mythology, all the imagine imaginations of all the authors that have contributed to the aliens universe. By making David the android the creator of the aliens, I don't think so. I don't think he created the aliens because <coughs> you remember back then in the, the alien, uh, what was the one before Covenant? Alien fuck it, I forgot already the name of the ship. So that alien, so that alien sh uh, show. We got to see the mural and we got to see the alien queen in the mural, so definitely David did not create the aliens. There was an, there was an alien queen in the mural, so that alien queen mural sub superseded David, so it, it came before David. So that means the aliens exist even before David was created. But never mind. Ridley Scott tried to destroy the alien universe, the comic universe, novel universe. I mean, isn't it great if you were to imagine that there is a, I mean, that I mean there are some properties or novels or comics that uh, told the story of a planet where these aliens came from, and there was no such thing as engineers at all. So <coughs> the aliens, they became super predators because they were living in a very harsh environment. And they became the something like humans, the super predator, the the topmost of the food rung, the topmost species on the food ladder or the what do you call those things? Pyramid, the food pyramid. The aliens were up above. Of course, in that 
alien world actually there is another species that that is almost as terrifying as the aliens so there was a what should we call it uh, there is an equilibrium in that home in that alien home world that's very interesting and I'm getting all my information from the YouTube channels so am I still collecting comics no I'm not it's expensive and am I reading comics because it's so easy to get comics from the internet no because I don't have time to do all these things doing the YouTube things and no time and sometimes I want to read manga I want to go back into Sidonia no Kishi aka Knights of Sidonia I'm gonna read that again <coughs> maybe in the future but I, do, I doubt it because I don't have time to read all these things or acquire the the trade paperback versions or the physical versions of the, all these comics so that's it see you in the next one bye